you're not good enough. You don't belong. You don't have the right education, the right hair, or the right connections. Why would you ever believe in a future of endless possibilities when society spins a narrative that you lack the skills, the network, and the knowledge to dare to dream? I want to introduce you to this girl. Her name is Nicole. She's so cute, <laughs> isn't she? She had so many dreams and aspirations. But she also had many people telling her all the reasons why she couldn't achieve those dreams and aspirations. Raised by a single mom, low income, black girl, not the right experiences. And as she got older, what she heard was not yet, not now. And the reality is what she heard, what I heard, was not you, never. But I was driven and curious, and I wasn't afraid to learn. So why would I let any barriers get in front of me? Well, many reasons. Because I lacked the confidence, I never really felt like I belonged, and I was awful at math and science. And I didn't have the right connections. So, as I thought I had to change my course of my dreams and aspirations, I found myself in this organization called AT&T. And I had the privilege of working on the team that brought DSL technology to the household. For the millennials and younger in the room, it was the cord that you had to plug into the wall, <laughs> then into your computer to get to the internet. <laughs> It was an exciting time. There was no more dial-up or that infamous sound of the modem being connected. We all hear it in our heads. <laughs> This was our time of a digital revolution. It was our moment of innovation. And I learned very quickly in this role that I was understanding this thing called the digital divide. And it was really driven by how much money you made or where you lived. Fast forward. Now I have the privilege of leading this amazing organization called TechBridge Girls. We have a really bold goal to serve a million girls by 2030. And we use STEM education to show girls, especially from low-income communities, that STEM can lead them to a path of economic mobility. So, when we have the facts that, the, that STEM education is our path forward, we believe that we can change a girl's life when she has the ability to create what we call science capital. Now, there's this young woman. Her name is Eileen Iningas. She was born in East Oakland, not too far from here. When she was in middle school, a man told her that, you know, she couldn't really be successful because not only was she a woman, but she was a woman of color, Latinx, and she was poor. But one day, she wandered into a program called TechBridge Girls. And in that program, she actually went because she was in pursuit for a free slice of pizza, something that was very special to her. But that decision led her to a life that she could never imagine. So she showed up every Friday got the skills, confidence, knowledge that she could actually be an engineer, something that she never thought a woman could be. And she stayed connected to the role models that our organization provided for her in high school and throughout college. And then she eventually graduated from UC Berkeley with a data science degree. And so, yes, round of applause. And we had reached out to her, specifically I did, because one, we wanted to congratulate her success, but 
we also wanted to hear what was next. In my conversation with Eileen, she literally told me, kind of shamefully, that she didn't have a job yet. What? Latinx woman, data science degree from the number one public university. How could this be? Well, we thought about it. In the UK, there's this concept called science capital. And what it means really is it's all of the knowledge, experiences, education, resources, and skills that you acquire over time around science. What you know about science, how you engage with science, what is it about science that kind of draws you in. And one other piece of that is about who you know. And in the reality is, is that, you know, sometimes this science capital thing is not so broad. It has a very small definition. But then on the who you know side, what if you don't know anybody? If you're like Eileen or even myself, we're too busy staying out of trouble, AKA not trying to get pregnant. Uh, we're trying to uh, get good grades, not perpetuate the stereotypes that were set for us, make our family proud, and then when we look up, we see that our social capital is empty. So what is this social capital thing? Who you know? Well, it's about the relationships, the connections that you make over time that often become the thing that advances and accelerates your ability to pursue your dreams and aspirations. So whatever happened to Eileen? Well, Eileen ultimately told us about her barrier around who she knew and no social capital. So we activated it for her. And within a month, she had two jobs, offers. She decided to go to a global leading STEM corporation. Now is there in their engineering department. She travels the world leisurely and is getting ready to go to Houston, um, Texas for her next rotation in her job. A life she could have never imagined before TechBridge Girls. So for, for me, this is way more than just getting more girls to code. This is about addressing an ecosystem that is preventing our girls from persisting into a STEM career, or what the bigger sense, this STEM revolution. This is about not giving them access, or the educators, or the networks, or the connections, or redefining the way that we reimagine this body of work. So, we live, literally, less than 40 miles from Silicon Valley, an industry that says that they lack diversity and can't find the talent to fill these high-paying jobs. Well, why can't they find enough Eileen's? Well, I know they can't find enough Eileen's because they're, they're too focused on the right, wrong emphasis. This is not about diversifying an industry or, or or even plugging a leaky pipeline. This is about an economic and social justice imperative when we choose intentionally to leave a population of girls out of this STEM revolution because they don't have the access, they don't have the network, they're not giving the knowledge, the opportunities, and we're defining science in a way that is only meant for if you go to a science camp versus the science of making tamales, which is still science. It's about creating. It's about making. It's about bringing things together and seeing a different result. So how do we not only deepen our understanding of science capital, but broaden it so that our girls from East Oakland actually see themselves in it? from the way that they make tamales with their family to the way that they may have to rewire their cable, basic cable, so that they can see power on Sunday. <laughs> right? That is science, and it has to be relatable. And then social capital, it's about making sure that we understand it is as important to build relationships. And when we build our own social capital, we need to extend it to others. 
because the reality is about who you know matters. And if you don't know the right people, then opportunity and access becomes another barrier, like it was for Eileen. So our moment is now. We have to dare to reimagine what it really takes for a girl from East Oakland to not only persist, but to thrive and grow and lead in this STEM revolution. We can no longer wait, because I remember sitting in that chair when I was on the team creating DSL, and I saw the economic mobility happen across the globe, as well as the social inequalities. Now, more than ever, each of us have to play a role in changing the perspectives, institutions, practices that we believe and are defining for our girls today. It takes all of us, me, you, us, the collective, to shift and reimagine the possibilities of what a girl from East Oakland, California, can do within this STEM revolution. And she can't be just one. This has to be the norm. The way that we validate, define, reinforce STEM success and for who matters. So, we can build a world where not only girls can dare to dream, but they can actually realize and thrive in this STEM revolution. But I need your help. I understand as a black CEO for over two decades in this sector, the narrative that was defined for me. Remember? Not you, not now, not never. And I work every day to redefine it, not only for my own sanity, but for the next black CEO girls that will follow in my footsteps. Is it exhausting? Hell yeah! And stop asking black women why we might be angry. <laughs> We're tired of redefining, okay? <laughs> Do we have to be intentional? Intentional. Well, we've been kind of doing it half-ass for this time, and we haven't gotten very far. So intentional matters. Do we, is it going to be hard? Yeah, because social change is hard. And if we really want to level the playing field, it matters. So I need you, each of you, to join me in this journey as we move a million girls with confidence, network, skills, and knowledge to the 21st century so that they can solve the challenges of our tomorrow and have the economic freedom to do it. Thank you.